Welcome to another episode of Dominic Does DIY. And like every other YouTube channel, like, subscribe, share, if you would please. And comment down below if you have any recommendations. Um, this is my third video, so I'm hoping to improve. Sorry about the mic. I haven't bought an actual good mic. I'm just using the one off the laptop. But anyway, this is going to be episode number three. Still continuing on with the op amps. And today we're going to dive into the differential amplifier. And we're going to look at one of its use cases. And then if we have time, we will also be able to show how you can use this to make a hardware shutdown system. So let us dive into the differential amplifier. Once again, I'll be using LT Spice to run some simulations so we can see how the differential amplifier operates. Now with the differential amplifier, like I said, I'm an engineer. So the formulas and, and how to calculate the gain for a differential amplifier, uh, they're pretty intense if you want to make things complicated. So, but I like easy mode. And so easy mode is in a differential amplifier you have these four resistors. This is the differential amplifier right here. And you have these four resistors, this RF and RN, and RF and RN, RN. And so long as your R6 and your R7, your RNs are the same resistor, and so long as your RF are the same resistor, it is easy mode, and all you have to do is, to calculate the gain is RF over RN. And then the differential output just becomes the gain of VN2, which is the voltage going into the non-inverting input of the op amp, minus VN1, which is going into the inverting input of the op amp. So what the differential op amp does is it takes the difference between your VN2 and your VN1, and then gives you an output of greater value. This is used in most of the things that I've used this for. In my experience, is just a current sense. So that's what we got set up right here. We have a current source that we're going to pulse into the system with. And then we are going to use our sense resistor right here in order to determine how much current is flowing through our load. In this simulation, we're just gonna set up our current source with uh, DC offset 25 amps, amplitude 25 amps, frequency of 10 again, and a time delay of zero. This will give us a current sine wave from zero to 50 amps. That'll go through this load through our sense resistor, and that'll give us an output equal to the gain of our differential amplifier over the sense resistor. So our values that we've chosen is we got RF is equal to 20K down here in our parameters, and we have our sense resistor at 20 milliohms. These things are just the formulas. So we got our gain is our F, RF over RN. Our V out is our V, our N plus minus our N minus times our gain. And our sense resistor, as I put in there, is 20 milliohms. And our load is 100 milliohms. So that means that our load is 50 amps. That's why I set the sine wave up for that. And it shows us that we should have an N plus voltage of one volt, our N minus. It's just going to ground. And that shows us that we should have a V out of about four volts. So let's run this. And you can see, just as expected, we send 50 amps through there. The sense resistor had one volt across it. And the RF over RN, our gain of four, gave us four volts out. So then with the circuit, there are some things that we have to pay attention to when we're doing it. Now from an engineering aspect, we need to consider two things. One, what is our voltage output that we're looking at? What is going to be our, our receiving thing? Is this a, going into a microcontroller with an ADD? 
what's the range on the ADD? Are you using a 5 volt VCC on your microcontroller? Is it a 3.3 volt microcontroller? Um, does it have a different uh, ADD converter on it where you need to be below 1.8 because it uses an internal reference? So we need to understand and know that when we're setting up our gain and what we're checking for. The second thing we need to look for also is the sense resistor and its size because we do not want to waste energy. We do not want to waste wattage on a resistor. Even though it'll work, we don't want it to be just needlessly wasting wattage and power on a sense resistor. So if we look at some uh, math on this, you can see that our amperage is 50 amps going through this as we calculated. And our sense resistor is 20 milliohms. So if you do Ohm's law, I squared R, you see we've got one watt on this sense resistor. Now, one watt sense resistor, it's either going to be a through hole or in this day and age, we use a lot more surface mount parts. So for a one watt resistor, you're looking at probably a 2512 component, which is too large. So we need to be able to shrink this down. Now, if we just want to say, hey, what kind of wattage do we want? And base our sense resistor on that. Let's say we just want to use a 25 watt resistor. This is a 1206 package, more standard issue, not as big as a 2512, uh, half the size basically. Um, and we want to stay about a safety margin. I always like 80% safety margins. So we're not maxing out the wattage on the resistor. It says that we need a sense resistor of about 8.08 milliohms. So this is pretty much impractical. They make sub milliohm resistances for sense resistors, but it's really impractical. We would rather still stay up above the milliohm range. So the other thing that we can do is we can try to drop our wattage, right? Um, we can't drop the wattage by dropping the, the amperage because we're trying to test for 50 amps. So the only other thing we can do is we can change our sense resistors value. So if we switch that sense resistor to like a 5 milliohm resistor, that should cut our wattage in fourths. And now you can see we got a 0 0.25. We got our 250 milliwatt resistor, which throws us out, which throws us into the 1206 package range. And we want a little bit safety margin. So if we just drop it down to three, we can safely put a 1206 re sense resistor on there at three milliohms and be able to get what we want. Now we have a, now we have to consider our output. So before our output, we were looking for zero to four volts, but now you can see with our sense resistor dropping, our N plus and our N minus now have a lower difference, which means our output has a difference, a, sm a smaller difference. So we need to change our gain now on our system. So we want to change the gain so we can get back up to the four volts. We're going to assume that we have a five volt rail. Since we're feeding our differential amplifier with, uh, with five volts, we'll assume that our microcontroller, our ADD converter, or whatever else we will use, a comparator, um, all of it will use five volt rail. So we will want to take this up to uh, four volts. So how can we get it up to four volts? We just got to change the gain. And so you don't want to go too high on your resistance values going into uh, an op amp because then you could end up getting some oscillation feedback. So what we're going to do is instead of changing the 20 kilo ohms, instead of raising that, we will just drop this. And just like we dropped our sense resistor by about four, we're going to want to raise this by about four. So we'll just try a one kilo ohm there. And that'll take us up to about three volts of an output. But remember we wanted four. So let's just take this down to a 667 ohm resistor. So now we went up to 4.5 volts, still good. So we wanna be uh, somewhere between this and the other one. If we look up a standard resistance values, standard resistor values, just can really pick anything. We definitely want a one percenter. So the E96 version. And so if we go down to the chart for E96, we want something between 667 and one. So let's try uh, 750. 
right? That'll be, that should be pretty good. So let's go back to the math. And then we're going to go ahead and change that to a 750. And that takes us down to four volts output just like before. So now let's go ahead and we will put those values in. We will change our sense resistor to three milliohms and we will change our input resistors, the RN, to 750 ohms. So first thing, the input resistance, we wanted that to be 700 ohms. And we're gonna change our sense resistor to three milliohms. And now let's go ahead and run that again and we should still have our output of zero to four volts. And there we go, we still have our input from zero to four volt. We adjusted our gain, we adjusted our sense resistor, and now our sense resistor is small enough where it is not dissipating a lot of wattage so we can use a smaller component and we will not be wasting heat checking for the sense resistor on it. Uh, we can, And we still maintain our zero to four volts on the output. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, engineering aspect on the differential amplifier. Hope you learned something. If you did, please like, subscribe, comment, and share the video. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.